Hey everyone, welcome back to the Robin's Houses virtual season. So last time I talked about the brief but terrible presidency of Andrew Johnson. Today, Ulysses S. Grant, Johnson's successor, will be the main focus. So Grant had been the top Union commander during the American Civil War. He would join the Republican Party, which was Abraham Lincoln's party. It was the, the pro-civil rights, pro-reconstruction party at this time. Grant would use his position as the Union star commander in the Civil War to run for president, and he defeated the Democratic nominee Horatio Seymour in 1868. Andrew Johnson, even though he avoided being removed from office by the U.S. Senate after the House impeached him, failed to secure the Democratic nomination. Nevertheless, the man the Democrats did nominate, Horatio Seymour, lost to Grant. Grant would serve two terms as president. From 1869 to 1877, he would be re-elected in 1872. Now, unlike Johnson, Grant was going to be an ostensible ally of Reconstruction. Okay. That meant that activists like the Robbins Houses, Ellen Garrison, who were trying to create a more equal society in the U.S. South and in the U.S. more broadly, had a supposedly a champion in the White House. Okay. And Grant, unlike Johnson, would use his position as president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces at key times during his eight-year presidency to help the freed people of the South during Reconstruction, to help their activist allies like Ellen Garrison. Okay. Grant would not be an impediment, okay, deliberately at least, to Union soldiers, U.S. soldiers, I should say, protecting okay, freed black people okay, and their white allies from angry southern mobs looking to perpetrate violence against them. Okay. Grant would sign civil rights bills, not veto them. In 1874, he signed a sweeping civil rights bill. Okay, so, Grant did a lot of good things as president vis-a-vis -vis Reconstruction, vis-a-vis -vis race relations. He even participated in the creation of the Department of Justice okay, to crack down on white terrorist violence throughout the South. Nevertheless, here's the problem with Grant. His presidency, okay, his White House, was infamous for being a free-for-all of graft, of corruption, okay, sometimes even reaching into Grant's own family. His wife, Julia, was implicated in a scheme involving some businessmen friendly with the family who tried to corner the U.S. gold market, causing a brief financial panic. Grant also, okay, in addition to being unable to crack down okay, on corruption in his White House and in Washington, D.C. more broadly, was not a very skilled politician. Okay, as the historian Douglas Edgerton points out in his book on Reconstruction, Grant was used to being able to give orders and have subordinates follow them. Okay. You can't do that when you're a politician. You have to be Machiavellian, cunning, okay, manipulative, able to compromise at key points, able to create voting coalitions. Abraham Lincoln, okay, despite his nickname, Honest Abe, was very good at that kind of thing. Grant wasn't. Okay. Very often he would cave in okay, to big business interests that were connected to the Republican Party for example. Yeah. So, despite his heart being in the right place, and despite the fact that he would not be an active racist impediment 
the way that Andrew Johnson was, Grant became, as his presidency wore on, especially in his second term, a weaker and weaker political figure. And this sapped his strength when it came to helping okay, freed black people in the South okay, and helping their white allies in the South. So, even though he was not a foe of the Ellen Garrisons of the world deliberately, his weakness as president helped undermine what was happening okay, in terms of creating a more egalitarian U.S. South and U.S. more broadly. Now, another problem for Grant's presidency, and this is not necessarily something that Grant caused, although his rampant corruption definitely contributed. In the fall of 1873, less than a year in to Grant's second term, he did get reelected despite his reputation for being corrupt. Okay. Some Republicans, even Charles Sumner, the, the, the civil rights leader, great abolitionist before the Civil War, got beaten to a bloody pulp, actually, by an angry Southern congressman. Charles Sumner actually deserted Grant and supported his opponent. Okay. Frederick Douglass, on the other hand, okay, who did not have the luxury okay, of doing that because he knew that a Democrat, had he won, Horace Greeley was the Democrat's nominee in 1872, would have completely reversed most of the progress that had happened in the South. And Douglas thought that it was nuts for someone like Sumner to, to desert Grant, despite Grant's corruption. Still, he's the ally okay, of the formerly enslaved black people of this country. We've got to support him, Douglas argued. So, despite this rift in the Republican Party, Grant did get reelected. Yeah, but then, Okay, yeah. Less than a year in okay, to his second term, the U.S. economy completely imploded. Okay. Starting in September of 1873, and it would continue this implosion, this cratering of the U.S. economy, a Great Depression, until 1879, a, a brutal sustained period of economic contraction and high unemployment. Did Grant and the Republican Party cause this? No, it was very complicated. Really what it was was overinvestment in railroads, and then whenever you have a financial bubble like that created, eventually it's going to burst, and people who invested in such a way as to think that the economic growth would continue indefinitely are going to take a bath. Okay. The, uh, the, the bank that the Freedmen's Bureau set up, the Freedmen's Savings and Trust Company, would go under as a result of this depression, with thousands of freed people losing their life savings. It was a horrific event. And folks, economic depressions are poison for civic projects like Reconstruction that are expensive, that require a lot of time and effort. Okay. You see businesses and banks failing all over the country. You see mass layoffs of industrial workers all over the country. Okay. Throughout the North, okay, businessmen, many of them affiliated with the Republican Party, become more interested okay, in saving their own skins than in rebuilding the South. Okay. Laid off industrial workers want the government to help them, okay. not people in the South who've been enslaved. What about my family, a lot of industrial workers think, when they can't make ends meet? And this leads to racial resentment because you have this sense of why is the government helping them? Why is the government sending troops to help them in the South? That's expensive. Why don't they help me? Okay. Business leaders want the government to send troops to crack down on rioting laborers who want higher pay and more jobs, okay. not protecting black people who are facing white violence when they try to exercise their constitutional right to vote. So you had this general 
pulling in of the oars starting in the fall of 1873, and it would last throughout the 1870s, completely undermining Grant's presidency, undermining the Republican Party, Grant's party, which was in power. Again, is it their fault? No. But you're in power when there's an economic meltdown. You get blamed. Okay? The Great Depression of the 1930s was not Herbert Hoover's fault. Okay? Nevertheless, He's in power and it happens, he gets blamed. So, as a result of this, okay, you start to see the government pulling troops out of southern states, opening the door for an upswing okay, in white terrorist violence. The kind of thing that Grant had been at first willing to crack down upon, but now, not as much. Okay it became less and less safe for formerly enslaved black people to vote. Okay? There was rampant violence, for example, in the midterm elections uh, in November of 1874. And the Democrats, actually, in November of 1874, back then the anti-Civil Rights Party, the anti-Reconstruction Party, the pro-South Party, it retook the U.S. House of Representatives, making it almost impossible for civil rights legislation to pass. The only way that Grant was able in uh, those years to sign a civil rights bill was because the lame duck Congress that was voted out in November of 1874 had passed it. Once the Democrats retake the House, he's not going to be able to do things like that. So, the just unhappy coincidence of this depression happening in the midst of Reconstruction pulled the rug out from under people like Ellen Garrison, people like Frederick Douglass, who was trying to administer the Freedmen's Savings and Trust Company. It made their lives much harder and significantly set back the cause of civil rights. Another issue that was going on at this time, and another one where Grant showed his weakness, was that farther west in the United States, the last free Native Americans, including the Lakota and the Northern Cheyenne, were making their stand to protect their homeland against U.S. encroachment. Now, there were a lot of valuable resources in the U.S. West, to the sacred Black Hills for the Lakota and the Northern Cheyenne, for example. There's gold there. Okay. So U.S. mining companies want that. Okay. The Lakota and the Northern Cheyenne don't want encroachment. This led to war. What was needed for this war against these Native Americans trying to protect their homes? Soldiers. Grant sympathized with Native Americans. One of his top aides throughout the U.S. Civil War and into his presidency was a man named Eli Parker, also called Donahagawa. Okay. Grant was pressured into firing this man, his old comrade from the war, because Republican mining companies didn't like the idea of there being a Native American sympathetic to the Native Americans of the Plains in Grant's White House. Classic example of Grant not being able to play the political game the way an Abraham Lincoln could. You end up having soldiers, especially cavalry, horseback riders, okay, pulled out of the South where they were protecting formerly enslaved black people who were trying to fight against terrorism, these soldiers are now moving west to help steal land, conquer land that belonged to the Native Americans. It shows you, as you so often see throughout U.S. history, the horrible symbiotic relationship between this country's two great original sins slavery and the treatment of black people more broadly, and the treatment of Native Americans. Soldiers that could have been okay, protecting formerly enslaved black people instead 
are fighting Native Americans in the West. Okay? This was going on even in the midst of this depression. So the government, okay, big business didn't want it helping people in the South exercise their right to vote. What do they want it doing? Conquering land to increase economic growth, fill the pockets of businesses affiliated in many cases with the Republican Party. Okay. So even before the end of Grant's second term and the corrupt election of 1876, would lead, which would lead to the official pulling out of all troops in the South, the number of U.S. troops protecting formerly enslaved black people as they tried to vote, as they tried to build schools and churches, build a decent life for themselves, the number had been dwindling already. Okay. And the main culprits would be the Depression and the way that it discredited the Republican Party and, and just led to a, a decrease in the civic-minded spirit of this country. Also, though, okay, the wars over land, the theft and conquest of land okay, in the American West. Okay. In the end, unfortunately, Reconstruction would be sacrificed to these interests, okay? sacrificed as a result of these tragedies, and it would leave formerly enslaved black people and their allies in the South okay, without the vital protection okay, that they would have to have if they were going to avoid retribution from vengeful Southern whites. So Grant, very different from Andrew Johnson, Seemingly an ally, but a combination of incompetence, corruption, okay, weakness, and bad luck led to his presidency. Despite the fact that he did some very good things, ultimately being a failure vis-a-vis -vis Reconstruction. Now folks, for more on this, please visit our website and check out some of our brochures on Ellen Garrison and her work during Reconstruction. Thank you so much.